Hello! This is my second time trying to record this video. The first time, my Motorola Edge 5G UW 2021 corrupted the audio completely. It doesn't work. Um, and it also stopped recording after five minutes, which is pretty weak because I had a lot to say. But in any case, I saw the wild robot, and what better place to talk about the wild robot than in the wild? Look at all that wild. What is this movie about? Well, the title gives us a little bit of a hint. It's about this robot that washes up on shore on an island with no people on it, no humans. Um, she's the only wild robot that survives out of her shipment. Basically, there's... They changed it a little bit in the movie from the book, but basically she's the only one. And so, um, she has to learn how to survive as a robot when she's in the wild, which is full of predators like bears and even like a deer or something like that could ding you up a bit. Um, or a skunk, which could... I, I mean, she doesn't have a sense of smell, so that's not really a big deal. But you get the, the, the idea, right? There's all these animals out in nature that could totally eat you for lunch. Um, I don't see any. I'm also next to the highway. I don't know if you can hear that. It's it's pretty quiet, but um, I've probably driven over this river so many times, but from down here, it looks a lot different. It looks very, very different. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so who are the principal cast? Well. You've got Lupita Ngokongo. Oh. You've got the lady from Black Panther who played the uh, Queen's Royal Loyal Guard as the wild robot. She turns in an amazing performance as this robot. She really sells the like slowly learning to become more human thing. Like, at the beginning, she's just reciting basically the pre-programmed dialogue that her creator gave her. And so she really sounds exactly like what, you know, some tech company would design their robot to sound like. She has, like, no personality. She's just very cheerful and chirpy. But then over the course of the film, you sort of get to see her develop this character, develop into more of a real person with actual ideas, goals, and uh, feelings, which is fantastic as well. Then there's, of course, her son, Brightville. Now, I, w I know what you're thinking, how can a robot have a son? Well, it was an accident. Um, she brutally, well, no, she didn't brutally do anything. It was accidental. She fell off a cliff. She landed in a bird's nest, and the birds, the bird and almost all the eggs died because she landed on them. She's a robot who has been designed to do no harm, at least on purpose. She doesn't, you wouldn't expect her to be able to cause harm to anyone, but it was an accident. She didn't know where she, she couldn't see where she was going. She was just getting chased around by a bear and it was attacking her. So she just like falls off the cliff and then there's only one egg left in the whole nest that has survived. She uses her robot powers, her senses, her sensors, and she determines that there's still a living creature inside the egg, and thus uh, she must not allow it to come to harm because it's a living creature. But she doesn't really get it, like, like, that's her programming, you know? She's programmed not to do do violence or do harm, but like, she doesn't really get why or how that, she, she doesn't know like the emotional side, I guess, of like wanting to protect someone. 
um, that you care about or feel responsible for. Then there's a fox. Now, I don't remember the name of the fox. Um, the fox is played by Pedro Pascal, who is also doing a fantastic job. He, he just has that fox voice down, you know? He's kind of, kind of tricky, kind of sarcastic. Um, and, you know, ultimately the fox has some uh, sort of moral standing. Like, he wants to eat the egg. The robot's like, you can't eat the egg. It's alive. And he's like, oh, it's, I mean, I'm, I'm a wild animal. Like, I eat eggs, that's what I eat. I have to survive. I have to eat other creatures to survive. That's how it works. That's how nature works, the wild. That's how the wild works. Here, look. It looks beautiful, but there are tons of creatures out there that are eating each other and eating the grass and and uh it's a very scary place that was part of the themes of the movie actually so <laughs> let's see oh is that a car it is somebody parked their hummer or their SUV. There's not supposed to be vehicles allowed on the trail, so... Um, that's interesting. But the fox is ultimately uh, going to co-parent the, the egg with this wild robot. And so his role basically was expanded from the book. In the book, I felt like I wanted to see more of him. So I actually really like that the movie basically did that. Um, I read the whole, I read like three of these books that the movie is based on because I really wanted to like, I, I really loved the trailer. <laughs> I thought this looked like an, such a creative idea and I really wanted to see where the idea came from and how it was executed there. And so I was reading the books with, in the back of my mind, the idea that there was a movie coming and I was sort of thinking about ideas for what they would change for the movie. So I'm really, really happy that they read my mind. <laughs> they read my mind and they put this actual, um, they put more emphasis on this fox guy because it turned out great. He's like one of the best characters. He's like the emotional core of the movie, basically. He's an actual wild animal, but he's able to sort of transcend his his nature a little bit, transcend like his place in the ecosystem and all that sort of thing. So it's really kind of awesome. I like that a lot. Um, It's a tree mobile. A mobile mobile hanging off a tree. Interesting. Um <laughs> What other characters do we have? We have the beaver on the island named Paddler. His role is correspondingly reduced from in the book. So in the book, like the wild robot and the beaver just sort of become great friends because she sort of copies his his uh, beaver lodge design and he shows up, he's like, you just copied that. Try making something new. And so that, you know, becomes a way for the wild robot to start to express her creativity um, and start to sort of make things on her own uh, accord or volition, which, you know, she was never programmed to do. Um, I guess I should say, uh, the animals are not, like, special talking animals. Um, the wild robot just hibernates for, like, a long time, and she just decodes the language of all the animals, um, by just listening for a really long time and sort of, um, 
building a database and um, using some machine learning and that sort of thing, which is like kind of one of the most sci-fi concepts of the whole movie, but it also feels like it could actually happen. Oh, look, some, some red berries. You know, the rules say I'm not allowed to take anything from this park, so I probably won't um, do that. I will just take a video of it. And you guys can tell me whether I would have died if I ate those or not. Um, <laughs> or or um, what they are. I don't know what they are. Oh, look, some more. I want to say those are currant berries. That may be completely wrong, though. <laughs> oh. Feeling a little loopy, I guess. That's all the endorphins from walking around in nature. Um, and it might also be because, like, I'm sick. But um, you probably can't even hear that in my voice or anything. The leaves are turning. So in the books, the hedgehog, oh no, the porcupine, that's not it. In the books, the beaver has a whole family, a beaver family and little beaver children, and um, all of them get to know Roz the robot, the wild robot, very well. Um, so that's... Um, That's changed, but I don't think it's a bad change. I think the movie works pretty well, actually quite well, with just one Fox character acting as the co-parent, because they really get to focus on developing him and making him super compelling, and he's his voice performance is really good, too. Like, I really like this Fox character. He's really great. Um, he's fantastic. So, yeah, um, there is a porcupine on the island. Um, the fox is initially, like, uh, rescued by, uh, by the wild robot when he gets a face full of porcupine quills, and she uses her robot precision to pull them out and, you know, treat him for this, uh, injury and he's like why are you even why are you helping me and she's like she doesn't say this exactly but she's sort of like kindness is my superpower my superpower is kindness and he's like that's stupid if i were bigger than you i'd, I'd eat you i want to eat your your egg that you have i'm not like a good i'm not good i'm not moral i'm just wild and he, there's no hope for me you know he's really kind of He's really kind of sad. He's a very lonely character. Okay. You can see that, right? And 
and he's gone. <laughs> oh, look at him go. We still have some crickets and grasshoppers hanging around. I think this is a natural nature reserve. It um doesn't sound very natural. <laughs> anyway, let's see who else. Um, there is Mama Opossum or Mama Possum. So <laughs> most of the animals run away from Roz because she makes loud noises and she plays like her promotional video, her promotional sounds that she would normally play if like she was opened by a human or like if she was set up, turned on by a human, you know, programmed. Um, and so she goes around the whole island making these noises and the animals are like, oh, she's like a monster. She makes a lot of noise. She's scary. Um, we don't like her. And the, uh, the possum feels the same way, but when a possum senses danger, um, they play dead. And so the possum basically gets to see how the wild robot actually acts when she's not when she's uh not playing her promotional jingles and all that sort of thing and shouting about how she's here to uh complete her tasks uh, the tasks of her human um overlords and stuff and so in the book, the possum is like, oh, well, here, I can give you some parenting tips um, for how to, how to raise your, your son. Uh, the egg hatches, he's a goose. The goose is named Bright Bill. And I know you must be asking, Bright Bill, huh, that's a funny name. Who came up with that? It was the wild robot. She came up with that with her own creativity on her own volition. Um, and that was a significant moment in the movie because she's trying to generate a name. Uh, the fox is like, why don't you generate a name? No, he doesn't say generate. He's like, this is your kid, you gotta name him. And Ross is like, uh, you will be designation 0001. And he's like, no, you gotta be more creative than that. She's like, Okay, um, you'll be designation two, five, three, four. See, the numbers are random and in no specific pattern. And he's like, well, that's not a name though. You can't like name your, your son like a bunch of numbers. The name has to like come from something and mean something. So she doesn't really name the kid for a while. She doesn't name the, the little duckling, the little gosling. Um, the fox is like getting her to feed him lots of food and he's like, no, to trust me, the, the gosling would totally eat this stuff, but like he doesn't eat any of it because <laughs> it's fox food. It's not gosling food. Um, at the end of the day, he just like takes five seconds to find some grubs for the gosling to eat because he does have a heart and he does care. Um, but, you know, he doesn't think of any, anything of it. He's just like, eh, whatever, whatever, it's fine. Um, so, yeah, I think that's probably enough teaser information about the plot. Because what I really want is for you guys to all go and watch this movie. Immediately drop everything. It's fantastic. Um, the animation, I didn't even point this out yet. The animation is phenomenal. I love the style they went with. It's a DreamWorks movie, and I always have a soft spot for DreamWorks movies, even Ruby Gilman. But like, this is another pretty original idea, and the concept is just so wonderful, and it works really well as a movie. They really did a good job adapting it, I think, uh, I feel. And the score, oh, the music. The music is also fantastic. Um, also really good. 
I don't want to spoil it too much, but um, in the original book, all the robots are kind of designed basically the same way. Um, the wild robot just looks a bit different because she's been in the wild. Like, she loses her limb. She gets, like, scratched up by animals. Um, when she's sitting around observing for, like, a, a long time uh, to learn the languages of the animals, she, um, she sort of gets covered in plants, like moss and things. And she never really fully gets rid of that stuff, so... So that makes her look different in the book. But in the movie, you know, when you, if you, uh... In the movie, all the other robots have really creative designs, and I really like that they're sort of... They sort of give the other robots character, too. Um, even though they haven't been Robinson Crusoe'd on this island or anything, so they don't really have, or aren't supposed to have much character, like, the design is the character. It tells you everything you need to know about these robots without them having to act in a certain way or speak in a certain voice. Although the voices for those robots are good, too. Um, things I will say... Uh, the, ro the the movie feels like it has to skip stuff. It feels a bit rushed in the pacing because there's like three books of story and I'm pretty sure the first book just sort of ends inconclusively. Like, Roz, you know, has to um, get repairs somehow, eventually, because she's like this wild robot and the humans are the only ones who can really do those repairs so she has to go back um she has to go to the city and like um find her creators and and get patched up so she leaves and then the gosling bright bell well he's a goose so sort of a migratory bird and he has to go off and migrate so he leaves the island and he's gonna come back eventually but, like, he has to be gone for a period of time. And it's, like, uh, uh, winter, you know? It's going to be winter. Now, of course, Roz stays the winter on the island. Um, because at that time, like, she doesn't need to leave that badly. She doesn't even really know if uh, her creators are looking for her or not. Um, and so she's just... She doesn't have that sense of urgency. Um, yeah. So... And then there's another two books of plot. Like, there's the book where she's in the... She's actually with humans. And she's just so... She has her memories still, but she's, like, pretending... She's playing possum, if you will. She's playing dead. And, so they didn't wipe her memories, they just patched her up and sent her back to some humans. So she spends some time with the humans and learns things there. Um, and then in the third book, gosh, it's been a long time, I don't exactly remember. I think she has to eventually go back to the island, or she wants to go back to the island. Um, she wants to take care of Brightbill, she wants to see him again, that sort of thing. Um, but, yeah, so it kind of felt like they were stuck with the movie because they can't exactly do three books of story in one movie, and they don't necessarily know if they're going to get sequels to this, so they had to sort of give it a feeling of being concluded and being over without using the ending that was already written. Um, and they threaded the needle pretty well, I felt like. I felt pretty good about the ending, but it was very it was a very challenging sort of writing situation. Um, yeah, so go watch this movie. Um, go watch this movie, go watch it. You should go watch this movie. The Wild Robot, it's in theaters. Um, so good, so, so, so good. I can't even tell you how good it is. 
It blows Ruby Gilman out of the water, figuratively. <laughs> Best DreamWorks movie I've seen in years. Um, go watch it, please. Please.